Oh my god, the color is disappearing. In the spirit of the multiverse of madness, we are going to try multiple methods of modifications to create Evil Doctor Strange. Let's go! Hey guys, ZW here and today is the day we combine every single technique that we know to create Evil Doctor Strange. Starting with our newest gadget, the 3D Scanner. We are going to borrow the head sculpt from Hot Toys to get a digital copy and modify it in the computer. The reason why I'm dusting Doctor Strange with a suspicious looking white powder is to lighten the hair and the beard so that the POP2 scanner can capture them. I made a video on this scanner specifically, so if you want to learn more, make sure to check out the video. And here is the result of the scan. The overall shape has been faithfully captured, but it's missing fine details like the eyes and hair strands, which is quite disappointing, but it will still shave off a huge amount of time compared to trying to sculpt him from scratch. And don't worry about the powder on the head, just use your nose, I mean there is no issue because it's removable, just a little tedious. Which is why I decided not to scan the black boots to avoid dealing with the white stuff in the fine crevices. Oh, and the reason why I needed a pair of boots is because the knockoff Doctor Strange outfit made by C-Pop did not come with one. I will figure something out, we shall focus on the head sculpt first. I started to comb his hair because that's the messiest part of the sculpt, and Eva Strange has a different hairstyle. But I quickly realized that it's probably better to just create a separate hairpiece and just add it on like a toupee afterwards. So I proceeded to dig out the eye sockets for the eyeballs. Honestly, I was really hoping that the scanner could have done a better job capturing the eyes because I feel that it's the most defining feature of a person. But oh well, it's a limitation that we need to deal with considering how affordable the scanner is. Once they are all in place and the ugly mountain of hair is flattened into his skull, we are going to wrap it. As in digital wrap, which is a technique that we have recently started to employ, basically turning a base mesh from the 3D scan store into the Doctor Strange head sculpt, so that we can apply skin pores and change expressions. And the process is not hard, just pointing out all the spots for the software to do its job more accurately, that's all. There's a specific tutorial on their YouTube channel, so head over there if you want to learn more. Alright, time to rest our eyes and cook some red color remover. No, I want to customize the outfit of Eva Strange to be like Strange Supremes in the What If series, and his outer vest is actually maroon in color. And I want to take this opportunity to try something new, which is removing color from an outfit. Once the powder is stirred evenly, we can put the outfit in and oh my god, the color is disappearing! It worked so well removing the blue dye, but it was like 10 bucks per pack. Ouch. Just gotta wash the residues away and hang it out to dry. Okay, we're back to make Doctor Strange smile using the multi expression base that I demonstrated in my Spider Venom video. I was able to change the facial expression by merely manipulating some of the sliders make him squint his eyes a little, but also adjusting the overall shapes manually, and separating his teeth so that he could smile properly. Weird but fun stuff really. Just saying it's also a little hard to replicate a specific expression from just one photo, but I'll try my best with my limited knowledge of facial anatomy. But yeah, let's give Doctor Strange his hair cause it looks damn weird without it. This hair has a center parting which is a little different from regular Stranger's hair and thankfully there are some, let's just say, low resolution footage of the movie that I could take screenshot of to refer for sculpting. Also Strange looks strange without his goatee. Similar to the hair, we start from a sphere that is then bent into the shape around his chin and his mouth, again with the help of some dubious clips of Evil Strange. And it's just freestyle from here. I mean, how different can facial hair look, right? Just some strands here and there, and we can go into the details of the face. I don't know if they specifically went to sharpen Evil Stranger's eyebrows, but I just love that subtle curve at the end that is really selling the evenness. 
and I hope I replicated it well. Another recent discovery we adopted is the texture maps from 3D Scan Store. Yep, they are lifesaver. Just a few clicks and the smooth face immediately looks so realistic. Look at that. Obviously, the texture map will not be identical to strangers' facial features and there will be a need to go in close and personal to add in some wrinkles and his lovely mole on his forehead that got removed subsequently because I totally forgot that I wanted him to have a third eye. That's gonna be fun. So I duplicated one of the eyeball and stuck it in the middle of his forehead. Then I tried to wrap the foreskin, I don't know, eyelids, yes, eyelids around the eyeballs, sharpened them and adjusted the third eye to look at the same direction as the rest and it's ready for printing. Look at what it was before and what it has turned into now. Pretty sweet, yeah? Now it has been prepped for printing, we can send it to the printer to let it come to life. And while we wait for that, we can deal with the outfit, specifically the cape. Her strange Supreme's cape has a sharp collar. What's up with the sharpness and the evenness? Anyway, I cut a piece of my white pants, did a little tracing and cutting, which all went to waste because I gave up halfway through. My patience for outfits is just so fleeting. But good news, cause the outfit is surprisingly white. The yellowness is actually from the solution and once it's been washed away and dried off, it's actually really white. I love it. Now I'm just airbrushing some color because an actual bottle of dye is pretty expensive and I doubt I will be using it a second time. So after a couple layers of paint on the outfit and my own hands, I think it's not bad. Strange Supreme also has a purple logo in front of the vest and I am more than happy to reuse the neglected white cloth for this logo. Again, just tracing on a cloth and cutting it out and painting it. Remember to like this video. Thank you very much. I think it looks decent and I'm going to glue it on. To be safe, I'm just going to glue it on a few points in case I want to change anything. But this should be it. Actually, I also tried to mod the cape, give it a little purple in front and black behind some gold trim along the edges, but it looks really bad. Also, the cuffings just don't accept paint, even when turned inside out, so we're gonna just leave it as is. Well, the print is ready, it looks great, and I can't wait to paint it. We have already seen the painting process, so I'm gonna speed it up. After red, after 10, after shadows. And damn, Hot Toys is still better, huh? After the hair, the goatee, and the sharp eyebrows, we can finally do the eyeballs and teeth and the special one in a lifetime, third eye. And we got an H Doctor Strange on the side. Then it's eyeball time. I want him to look a little to the side so it's not straight on. And of course the third eye will have to look towards the same direction. Some blue, some black and I'm gonna gloss teeth. And we can finish off with our new way of glossing the eyes, some UV resin. I'm so glad that the new outfit did not turn out to be a total disaster. The purple logo did not really cover everything, but it's fine. The new hit sculpt I really like. He looks so evil and ready to kill. Well, thanks to the original hit sculpt, that gave me a really good base to work on and the multi expression base mesh that helped me with the expression. Here are more customs that I've created and stay tuned to the channel. Goodbye.